Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. So, I have been paying a lot of attention to China because it's an atheistic empire with a lot of power and it stomps on religion. And so, I found it fascinating that they have Skynet, which has over 700 million CCTV cameras, right? Facial recognition, you name it. And for us Muslims, we know when you actually have taqwa of Allah, you're, you're God conscious, right? You're, you're aware. You know Allah is swift in accounting. Everything is recorded, what you do. So witness to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seen, all right? And when you're really aware of that, you operate differently, inshallah. But when you're an atheist, you don't believe in that, you don't have the same accountability. So you have to have a surveillance state in order to keep the citizens in line because it hints that if you're going to destroy religion which pushes people to be more accountable and to have more fear of consequences well you're going to erase that you can't just have the free-for-all it's it's not going to work humans have to have some fear of punishment in order to stay good some people are good because they want to be some because they don't want the punishment so China employing these, this surveillance state is the atheist ideal. So it's funny to me how ex-Muslims will mock Muslims for having a religion in general, but then think, what are you going to replace it with? They don't, some of them haven't even thought that far. And the answer is surveillance state. Because once you see the psychology of humans, there's always going to be deviance. So how do you get people to obey? Well, an inescapable surveillance state with a social credit score, with a carrot and stick method. You get rewards. One of the rewards is your kids will go to better schools. So be good, your kids will go to better schools. You be good in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you with things in this world and in the afterlife. But for an atheist, they have to give immediate rewards for being good citizens. Now, what I like that China has done is if you want to improve your social credit score, you have to do unpaid volunteer labor, right? Now, American prisoners, they have some work that they do, license plate, making underwears, you know, orange is the new black. It's not industrial, okay? It's not that bad. And liberals and progressives want to remove even that right whereas i think you need a gulag style like really mach machinized maybe like factory farmed esque type of mode of hard labor not soft like you know a little bit of this a little bit of that I'm talking every single prisoner who isn't a cripple has to do physical labor or something extraneous constantly. And that is their sentence. So for example, like work camps. America does not have full-blown skill work camps. All right? There should be the old-fashioned way of the chain gang. As I, I explain this in one of my videos, put a chip in them. So they can never escape. They put the chip surgically deep in so they can't cut it out. And track them. Have also maybe even a physical chain to their leg. And you make them work by doing hardcore construction. Whatever they're qualified for. Picking up garbage. Uh, going in a boat and having to take garbage out the ocean. Things like that. Like we have a lot of trash. Right? Some like when you do when you're a juvenile, you get in trouble, you get community service, you go on the freeways where there's like those grassy parts and you pick up garbage and then you'll see those orange tide bags on the side of the road and the garbage trucks will go and pick it up. That's soft. 
and it's not done every single day, all day, right? So, I suggest to ramp it up from the small level that it is. And not every prisoner is put to work. Not every jail and prison has a labor camp. And there used to be that expression, go breaking rocks. You know, making prisoners go and have to break rocks. Yeah. <laughs> We need something like that. And more avenues of maximizing the human energy beyond the level that it is now. Liberals are trying to reduce even what we already have. My argument is it isn't enough. And so I do think it's good that China has where this, this social credit score system has the double edge to it, right? If you're a Muslim, it's going to go down in social credit, right? I understand the black mirror type of element to this, but what I think is important is that China, they, they have like, when they had forced abortions with the one child policy, uh, when they had the COVID camps where people were forced to isolate, they took kids away from their parents, that was cruel, but I do think Obviously, with the Uyghurs, it's not right. But I do think the concept of a social credit score, we kind of have that ourselves as Muslims, where we think about the different levels of Jannah. Jannah al-Firdaus, right, is the highest one. And there's there's a depth to paradise and a depth to hell, from what I've read so far in Islam. So already, we say things like in Islam, oh, that person might be nearer to Allah than you. Right? So there's already a... A, a score there low and high so we already have this concept in our brains of the better Muslims we are the higher level we're gonna go in paradise so on earth we know material wealth isn't the automatic proof that you're blessed because everyone has different blessings and wealth is a test and trial poverty is a test and trial right but if you're going to live in this world and be subjected to atheistic rule, to the secular liberals and the communists and the socialists and whatnot, they have to have a system because they're godless where it's built around not just a meritocracy, but by enforcing laws and you hope that those laws are just. But... I don't see what's so bad about labor camps, all right, about, because remember, the gulags, dungeons, chain gangs, there was ways, public hangings, there was ways to keep people in line. I want you to think about, look at uh, Pelican Bay, Rikers, San Quentin, Folsom Prison. Tons of America's prisons are full, and you can't tell me that every single inmate has done 10 hours worth of forced labor. That's not happening, okay? They do maybe a couple trivial, menial tasks, and there's a lot of people. And then liberals want to get rid of isolation, where you're in a solitary confinement, and they get... Because remember, with basic research you'll see that some inmates are kept in their cells for quite some time. An hour of yard, the rest are locked down. So what I'm saying is, take those inmates and make them work. I'm not talking like, go in the library, earn your GED. I mean like, work work. And do not pay them that much. They can get some commissary stuff, but we're looking at tasks that can really help the nation. So let's say, for example, there's some type of coal mine. Uh, they need to gather salt. The dirty jobs, right? Jobs that are really extraneous, working in the sewers. Stuff like that. There's great guys who do that and they get paid but imagine if you gave every company like 
10 prisoners who work for very little. It's all, it's nearly slave labor, but inmate labor, we should call it. And this allows the company to make more money and get more profits. And then they can use that money to pay the good workers who aren't criminals more. So follow me here. Let's say you have a landscaping company. You got 10 workers and you pay them each a certain amount. But then you have two prisoners who work for like pennies on the dollar. The capital you got from them, you disperse it amongst those who are good. You see? And then you're showing society that, hey, you're bad. You're not going to make money. You're still going to have to work. If they don't want to work, flog them. If they don't want to work, take their organs. Uh, you can't just allow people to be literal leeches, fleas on society. An inmate sitting in the cell is a waste of energy, water, and food. He has to earn his keep. I think that's way more efficient. And we need efficiency now. We got too much dead weight. There's too many criminals now. And in libertarians and liberals will say, well, just let them back out into the street. While defunding police, taking away our Second Amendment rights, and not allowing us to carry knives. This puts us all at danger. No, no, no. We shouldn't be fed on like gazelles in the savannah. Rather, we need to send an example all across our nation of what happens when you commit violent crimes. You're a drug dealer, go to the work camp for what? Let's say 10 years. You reform, you get out. That back-breaking sweat may reform some. But let's say you have a, a felon who is like, he did something very sadistic in his crime. He cannot be rehabilitated. He's a threat to society. Okay. We have no use of him reading books in his cell getting fat on crappy prison food. He has two working legs, some arms, all right? Make him go work in, like, some really cold place, doing something. Who knows? Make him work outdoors, but like I said, we can track them. They're not able to escape. And maybe even tattoo them with a permanent, like, logo that these are inmates. So if they escape and... Put it somewhere where they can't hide it, maybe on the face, right? So you tattoo them with like the logo of like they are an untouchable, like a fennelin for life. If they escape, just call report them. So they'll be tattooed and they will be chipped. So they can't really escape too well and it'll help people to be able to find them. Because... We need to use these people. We got too many people on welfare. We got too many homeless people. So why not have the prisoners work for companies and then that, that capital that those inmates earn can then go to house some of the homeless people who really do need help, right? Use the prisoner labor at full force, full capacity to fix the ailments in society of people who need it because criminals are a disease on the nation. I'm not talking people who like jaywalked, uh, a stupid kid who stole a baguette. No. Some people can reform. I'm talking about people who you're like, you're going to be there for 20 years, we're going to use you. You're going to be there for 10 years, we're going to use your labor. And you're going to learn a lesson. You're going to serve society. You were a menace to society. You owe society now. You owe your government, you earn your keep, boom, work camps, real work camps. Even if we construct a facility, see a prison is different than a work camp. If you have like a large area and then let's say you got to grow these maple trees or you got to, there's an acre of walnut trees, you got to go out there and get it, you know, something where there doing back-breaking work, mixing cement, uh, apprentices who have to work in a fishery. If they don't do a good job, you switch them around to a job they can do. 
uh, making tables and chairs like there's factories right we're gonna diaper factory but either way reward the companies for using this inmate labor and then the capital that is earned you know we disperse that towards those who really need it because it is not fair that an honest decent person must pay taxes to this crappy inmate that's not right. The average inmate is 40000 a year in taxes. So, wait a minute. We who obey the rules, who do the right thing, who struggle to put food on the table, we gotta subsidize you? No, 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 no. Forget these liberals. Forget these progressives. Forget these Democrats. Nah, 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 nah. You will serve us. And that's the way it should be. And they have to suffer, they have to atone for their crimes. So when China has these cameras, facial recognition and a social credit score system, you can see the logic to that. You can see the, the reason of that. And let me, privacy is important in Islam. Spying is haram. If you remember the hadith where about stabbing, where the Prophet peace be upon him mentioned, if someone's looking through the people to stab, you know, stab them in their eye, there was like a hadith, I'm, I'm butchering it, but it's one of my favorite. I should have it memorized by now. But to poke someone in the eye who's, who's spying is different. Like, we're not talking about, like, in your own home, obviously you should have privacy. Even though people themselves install ring cameras, which actually catches a lot of crime. Uh, but, like, obviously you deserve privacy in certain areas. Outside, though, if you're a good person, I don't see a problem. Now, obviously, the dystopian sending the robot drones after you to annihilate you uh, in, in a case of a authoritarian regime that's gone off the rails, yeah, I can see a problem with that. But on the flip side, I don't see a problem with having accountability in this realm. I, I don't see a problem with that. China has a lot of issues but they're an atheist empire. And so, when you have American atheists who are like, yeah, defund police, totally, yeah. End religion. Make mock religious people for believing in hell and punishment. Like, when they're tearing down uh, creeds and replacing it with the creed of without God, anything permits, and we're all going to brush each other's hair, and it's not going to be Thomas Hobbes, you know, one for all, nasty brutish and short, will against will uh, reality, well, we're going to have a situation, aren't we? It's it's smart. It's smart. And I, I, have, I, I think we totally need... I, I get that some conservatives, some Christians won't, won't see it that way. And that it can be abused, right? Oh, you get access to better grocery stores if you have a social credit score. You know, will it make everyone always be fake and smiley? You know, will being rude lower your social credit score? I get it. But for prisoners, that's my thing. Because we're getting too many. And uh, Gavin Newsom, look it up. I'll share a screenshot later. <laughs> Their own policies have led to mass amounts of criminals. Remember, liberals say legalize, tax, and regulate all drugs. Problem with that? The drug addict runs out of money, they gotta loot and rob. It was liberals who said, if you steal under $900, you won't be arrested. So, what has happened? CVS, Walgreens have decided to leave because of the looting. San Francisco put everything behind glass and have to have lock and key. And so, you see what has happened. Their policies continually show you they are soft on crime and they enable crime by their behavior. So Gavin Newsom trying to put cameras shows you that China has a point and where when an atheist destroys religion and the human no longer fears God, <laughs> well, you better put in some cameras. It's just the way the human works. Now, some people are audacious and they will boldly commit crimes in front of a camera. I mean, people film themselves committing crimes and post it on TikTok. I understand some people film their own criminality. However, if you're good and you don't commit crimes and you're being watched on the camera and you get rewarded for that materially in this realm, 
you're getting rewarded by the government, and you're going to get rewarded by a loss upon what's Allah. So it was a win-win. It's a double win. The felon should may have their life be made as uncomfortable as possible. And prisoners, they shouldn't be getting free food. They should not be getting access to clean water while there are communities in California who don't even have safe drinking water consistently and there's always these oh you gotta boil your water you gotta do this i've shared those in the past so it's like citizens i'm not telling you there's always there's a funny joaquin phoenix when he does the johnny cash movie and he's in Folsom prison and he just says that he holds the water up and it's murky i get how some of the water isn't safe in prison my point is is they you turn the water on it's there okay that's my point well we have places where water is so scarce that kids don't have it so why is it the kids don't get the water but we give it to the inmates you see what i'm saying we don't make them really suffer like i said the brain can adapt to some really strange things and they'll invent their own culture to cope they'll invent their own coping mechanisms we are wasting human energy by having sloth and you know porked up inmates we need tough labor camps liberals have proven they can't rule america liberals are part of the reason that america has fallen to the state it has they attack religion which is the foundations of great societies and they've attacked law enforcement they, they've done so much to make us less safe you could go on and on about why liberals should never be allowed to rule again but my point is is china has something there just take a step back and look at it i'm not saying china is perfect but the surveillance state and the way in which they intimidate is like huh that's the atheist empire so while these atheists are cheering yay what century do you live in Ooh, religion is you know so seventh century it's like okay bring on the surveillance state but make sure that you're gonna carry out this sort of forced labor for the inmates that's my thing i think we need more talks i don't see enough religious people advocating for partial penalties for criminals you have to have deterrence. Yes, we say fear a law, but there's a good thing to have some uh, material results while we're here on earth. Because women, the elderly, we shouldn't live in absolute fear because the criminals got free range. Because the Ivy League, you know, uh, ivory tower types, the laptop class, you know, they've read a couple books and they're brushing their little beards and... You know, with their thick black frame glasses and they're just like, oh yeah, you know. He just wants bread. He, he just wants bread. You know, he had a red bad childhood, so we must forgive him. No. Sure, you want to do the Sweden model and reward them with all this stuff to incentivize them to change? Maybe. But it doesn't discount my point, which is every single inmate that can walk, male and female, must do hard labor forced labor every single day okay and if they don't have physical repr like re reprimands for them public whippings inmates get so bored they have gangs they stab each other they're smuggling drugs it's like it's a mess female corrections officers are having sex with them there's all this gay sex in prisons and you're like okay obviously this isn't working this is not working utilize that labor if they got time for booty making and spreading diseases in prison, they can go and do some construction labor, some landscaping, farming, cleaning up garbage. I mean, that's a great one that will help beautify society. Imagine taking these inmates, take 50 inmates, have guards with them with shotguns, right? But you know, if you run, blast it. If you escape, you can't because you're tracked and you're tattooed. And you'll be shot if you try to go away. Remember, 
if you did desertion in the Roman army, you were crucified. So we shouldn't forget in history, desertion of the army was punishable. The army defends the nation. So if a good, so if a soldier can get the death penalty, why can't an inmate who's done violent, vicious crime? You know, this is what I'm talking about. We're brainwashed now by liberals to feel sorry for criminals. You know, they owe us. They terrorize innocent people. The more true crime you watch, you see how some people you're like, nah, 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 nah. You deserve to do hard labor. And don't get me wrong. There's integrity in doing hard labor. Like the men who work in the slaughterhouses, that's a tough job. You know, working with a cow carcasses and processing them. And it's tough, tough work. There's some uh, individuals doing some construction nearby. They're doing welding. And it's like, and like in this huge building they're building. And you're like, wow, that's tough. People installing glass. and They're doing great work. That's awesome. Those men are strong and are the backbone of this country. But that doesn't mean I don't think that a lazy, fattened up inmate shouldn't be made to suffer. There's something about that. that they, they, they're just sitting there. It's like when if you were a wife and you were working two jobs, you come home see your husband sitting on the couch getting fat. He lost his body. He doesn't clean up everything. He's a slob. That anger you'd feel is like, so I'm working hard to take care of you and you don't do nothing? That's exactly what we do to inmates. It's exactly what we do to inmates. It's like, oh, what's prison? Yeah, you sit around, you can have gay sex. And now that they're allowing transgenders, female inmates can get access to a male who uh, puts a wig on and some lipstick who has a male phallus. We have women getting pregnant in prison because they have biological males who identify and, and, and do woman face in their prison. So now they can get actual penetrative intimacy. You have to think about that. You're like, liberals are making this too fun. Too fun. It's just... And wasn't it Lil Nas X who did a prison jail music video and it's like had a bunch of gay imagery with the butt crack because the butt crack is the male cleavage for gays. Like straight men look at women's chest cleavage, gays look at the butt crack cleavage, the sagging of the pants. It's like, so when you get intimacy, food, water, some entertainment, some books, Hermits do that in the cabins. The preppers do that already. So are they really suffering? You have to think about that. So this also comes down to how do you think prison should be? Should it be a punishment? Some people, like if you committed, I don't know, there's some crimes where you're like, all right, you know, you do two years, you'll be fine, you'll change, scare, scare you, you know? But there's some crimes where you're like, nah, hard labor. And don't, Feel pity for them. They earned it. Their two hands earned them this. Right? They had no mercy for their victims. Right? Why should I feel bad now? Because you got to go work in a labor camp. And every single inmate. We don't have that now. So that's my point. My point is. Make the inmates every single day. Have to use their human energy. Otherwise you're punishing the good people. Imagine if you cut the tax funding and the prison let's say they have to be self-sustaining they got to use their inmates to fund the prison cut off the public taxpayer dollars think about that the tax money we save put it back into public schools put it back into people's paychecks we stop subsidizing their prisons make the prisons like a horror house make the prisons horrible right show the brutality frighten these demonic people in our society who do not fear police officers they do not fear consequences they do not fear prison broadcast it you know china also has a, a board where they show you people who have a low social credit score and shame them remember religious communities have shame as well right shunning you know, all kinds of stuff right remember there was stoning for adultery, flogging for fornication for unmarried couples and stuff. Public things, of public shaming. So an atheistic empire choosing to use modern technology to shame citizens who have a low social credit score. 
I get that. And I mean, Twitter shames people constantly. Twitter is like a an abusive relationship. You know, that's mean. It's pretty mean. When you have cancel culture, every pocket group has cancel culture. So cancel culture is already alive. People already do that on their own. So when a government decides to show you like so-and-so's name, to have a low social credit score, I think that's brilliant. And I think it should be used here. So on that note, show the inmates. Now remember, liberals, they wanted to hide the mugshots, right? They started using Legos to cover the faces of mugshots. Look this up. And Lego complained and was like, don't use our toys and that. But even liberals, they want to hide mugshots. They do everything to protect the criminal. They don't want you as a good citizen to know where the danger is, who is dangerous. They even took off the box on the California job applications that asked if you had served jail prison time for being convicted of a felony. They took that off because they said it prevented people from getting jobs again. So everything liberals do protects the felon and puts the good citizens in harm's way. Let's reverse that. Let's vote. I mean, I don't I'm starting to think maybe we women shouldn't vote. I mean, we pay taxes, so it's like different, but we are kind of emotional sometimes and since so many women vote for liberals and liberals make crime worse, I'm starting to think that, you know, we got to be more careful of what we vote on. And the voting the lesser of two evils for whichever benefits Muslims is important. And so having less criminal on the streets helps Muslims, right? Helps us to be safe. Period. When we had a high Christian society, a high trust society, there was less crime, people were more wholesome, but... As atheism rise, occultists do open rituals, sexual degeneracy is rampant, the promotion of drug use. Well, now we're getting into a different society, aren't we? So China seems to have something there that I think is important. And man, I can't imagine a better way than to have those forced labor camps broadcast them. Look, this will be you if you do this. Right? Remember, the leader of El Salvador, he cleaned the streets. And who was it that went and cried for the felons? It was the liberals, the human rights activists. These felons tatted on their face who just brutalized women and elderly. Horrible individuals. You know? They were like, oh, he shouldn't make them stand and handcuffed. And be crammed in these spaces. Oh, he shouldn't do that. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, what? Like, liberals will always choose to, like, the sympathy where it doesn't belong. That's the problem. And more right-wing people seem to be, in the classic sense, more of, like, this is that. I think we can go for the more noble way of like a Ned Stark if you pass a sentence you have to carry it out right that's noble but the execution is still there right and again we have to do something about the crime and sending counselors into schools to be like hey kids don't commit crimes it's not working so we need a brutal one and we need to broadcast it we need to maximize their labor because we are given social security numbers so that we contribute to the nation's GDP, which funds the military base empire. We can't even get good health care because we have to pay so much in taxes. It, politicians are corrupt. It's not, they're sending our tax money to Ukraine, to Israel, to all these places. So why is it? That we can't use all that sitting labor. These gangbangers, drug dealers, pimps, you name it. They're all in the prisons. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. You just go and look up how many of these uh, prisons are overcrowded. And they're using like these big rooms with bunk beds. And there's just a bunch of inmates in there hanging out. 
It's like, that's labor. That's labor. A liberal says, oh no, those are all prestige scholars and, uh, you know, they must do this, must do that. Like, the Egyptians, when they put Joseph in the dungeon, that was harder than what the prisons we have now. Okay? Think about that. Think about it. We need to use their labor. Let me know what you think. It's a controversial topic, but there's nuance, is my point. And if you made it through this video, congratulations. Most people, uh, they don't watch the full thing and they didn't actually hear my explanation. And then they just rant. And you're like, clearly you can tell that individual didn't actually hear what I said. But that's the Twitter Audi mindset. Hear two minutes, type. Don't finish and then reflect and then type. Be wise. But uh, let me know. And I like these serious conversations because we need to start having them. And if you'd like to support the channel, it's www.subscribestar.com slash Milhon Archive. I'll see you there.